what's going on YouTube and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before thank you for returning if you are new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed yet what are you doing make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that post notification bell set it to all so you never miss when I drop a new video make sure everybody watching this video smash that like button and drop a comment down below y'all know I love chatting with y'all let's get this video out to the algorithm let's get a hundred likes a thousand views on that I don't think that's a lot let's get that going y'all saw the title in the thumbnail this is Molly he is the sweetest little boy his owners did not trust him with any other groomer. They sat in the window and watched each and every one of us groom for a few days just to kind of determine who they wanted their dog to go to. And she came in and she said, I want you to do my dog. I trust you. You do a good job. I see how patient you are. I only want you to touch my dog. Now, originally she came in for a walk-in just for his nails, but I told her, you know, with all the matting that he had on his legs and around his feet that he would have to come in for a groom. So she set up one that week and this is the groom you guys he has a major transformation it is a complete 180 he looks so adorable when he's done and i discovered something about him during the video i want to see if y'all catch it drop it in the comments if y'all catch it i think it's the cutest thing <laughs> but without further ado let's get straight into the video also you guys if y'all hear a little wind in the background that is just the fan i have it facing me because it's a little warm right now but i may have to edit some of that out i may even turn the fan we'll see how bad it sounds when i re-listen to it but i just wanted to give y'all a heads up okay i turned the fan <laughs> i listened to it it was too much in the background and i realized it was kind of muffling out my vocals so i turned the fan but now we can get into the video <laughs> So per usual, we're going to be starting off with his prep work. So that's going to be his sanitary, his paw pads, and his nails. I decided to do his sanitary first and his prep work because one, I always do it, but also he had mats in between his paw pads and some on his sanitary. And I know a lot of people are going to ask me, if you knew you were shaving him down, why didn't you just shave him first and then wash him because it saves time and everything that y'all keep saying to me? so pre-shaving a dog does not save time i don't know why there is a misconception about that but it does not save time you are literally taking 30 minutes 40 however long it takes you to pre-shave a dog out before you wash the dog and then you're going to take 15 anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes to wash the dog and then after that you're going to pull the dog back out to go over the pre-shave because the pre-shave is not a perfect cut it's a rough cut you just want to get the mats off get the hair a little bit shorter it's literally the same time it doesn't save any time the dog is not in, under any stress if I pre-shave him or not and also the pet parent asked me if I can leave as much length on him as I could now with the mats that he had on his feet he had mats on his back feet i don't know if y'all caught that during the first video when i showed what he looked like but i was able to get a longer length under it after the bath than i would have prior to the bath now had i just pre-shaved him i probably would have been able to only get maybe a 10 maybe a 7 but chances are the 7 was a stretch i probably would have been only able to get a 10 under him but because I washed him and blue dry him out, I was able to get a five. So this is why I always tell everybody, if you have a mad dog and the dog is not pelted, it's not to the skin, it doesn't look that bad, he may have like one or two bad spots, see what you can do. Test your limits, test your strengths, push yourself and see what you can do. Because I promise you, you're training yourself to be better, to be a better groomer and to know what your limits are and how far you can go. So for his bath, I did an apricot shampoo. I did an apricot shampoo because he had some obvious allergies around his feet as well as yeast buildup. And then I could see around his eyes, he had heavy tear stains. So that comes from allergies as well. 
so when I see yeast on a dog I don't do oatmeal I do an apricot shampoo and like I said in the beginning he had a lot of matting in his sanitary area and the fur was discolored kind of the same color as his paw so that led me to believe that he bites his sanitary as well as his feet which is why his feet were matted in the spots that they were whenever you see a dog that has matting in his sanitary matting on his paw pads and matting around his feet and it is discolored to like a burgundy color or a copper color that's a sign of an allergy and it can get worse over time if it's not properly treated or dealt with Another very major sign of allergies that a lot of people don't know, and I don't know if I spoke about this on my channel, and I, I believe I have, but I might not have, but another very clear sign of allergies is when they have heavy tear staining. Tear staining comes from allergies. Actually, you know what? I do believe I spoke about it. I believe I went into detail about what tear staining is and where it comes from, but it is a very, very obvious sign of allergies, even if they don't have irritation on their paws or the sanitary area or they're not licking or, or scratching tear stains is a sign of allergies and it can be a sign of the start of allergies so one of my dogs Yazzie whose tear stains and allergies are starting to look a lot better still working on her skin and her coat she has hyperpigmentation and that comes from the heavy yeast buildup in her body when she was a puppy she had really bad tear stains and then they got better over time and then they got just worse out of nowhere so once i switched her to a homemade diet it was a game changer a complete game changer so if you see heavy tear stains excessive copper red colors on the paws sanitary that is allergies you can talk to your vet about it but i would really talk to a food specialist about it because it's going to start in the diet and start from the inside out quick side note when i put him back in the cage he was perfectly fine and then i turned my back and he started yelling at me i inserted a clip just so y'all can see and it's coming up it was hilarious Yes, y'all he had a whole attitude when I turned my back to him he felt like he had to let me know that he, I am not allowed to put him back in the crate and I am not allowed to turn my back to him and if I did I was gonna hear about it and I definitely heard about it <laughs> but just to quickly hop back into the allergies before I talk about his haircut if your dog is struggling with allergies and it's major allergies if, if there's skin loss anything like that I would recommend talking to maybe a dermatologist that knows about holistic treatment and not just holistic treatment but also just traditional treatment as well talk to somebody like that talk to maybe a veterinarian that specializes in both that knows about raw feeding and different options that you can do for your dog because a veterinary diet veterinary food is not going to help because if your dog has a yeast issue your dog should not be having grain your dog should not be having heavy grain any grain at all really and veterinary diets nothing against them for some dogs they really work but for a lot of dogs they don't they only temporarily fix the problem and they are still flare-ups if you are getting a treatment that's supposed to fix it your dog should not have a flare-up that's why you have to start from within and clear the gut out so try and look for a dermatologist a food specialist a vet anybody that specializes maybe in both because maybe your dog does need medication first to kind of clear up the irritation and then work from the inside out to prevent it from coming back
and do all of that once you've done your research once you've done every thing that you possibly can to learn about everything that you possibly can about your dog reach out if you are still unsure if you don't know where to start because at that point you would then still have an understanding so you're not just taking what the vet says or what the person you talk to says for word you have your own backing your own research on it as well and you know what i do realize that i talk about allergies a lot but i get a lot of dogs that have major allergies and i'm trying to help them fix it because i'm now realizing that a lot more dogs than i realized have an allergy issue so i figure if i talk about it on here it'll help whoever's listening suffering with the same issue but since i've talked about that now it's time to get to the haircut So now getting into his haircut, like I stated, he did come in with some matting. It wasn't heavy matting. He had, the major matting he had was on his feet. So on his back feet, the front part, and then on his front feet, just right around his paw area. He has some matting around his body and on his muzzle, but because they signed up for one of our upgraded packages, he was able to get a conditioner. I allowed that conditioner to sit on him for probably about 10 minutes. And that was able to go into those mats and loosen them up. And then also separate them from the skin once I hit him with the blow dryer. Well, you know, his fur. Once I dried him, it was able to separate the mat from his fur. Now, what I will say on his back foot, that one was a little bit harder to get out. That had to be the hardest one to get out. But I just took my time with it and I was able to get it out. But for the most part, his body was in okay shape. So because I was able to let that conditioner sit on him, it did separate the mats from the skin, like I said. And I was able to get a five through his body. And I did a one guard comb on his face just so his face can be proportioned. I was able to brush out the mats on his muzzle. And then I believe he had a few under his chin. I was able to brush out some of them. Some of them I did have to shave under his chin, I do believe. But for the most part, I was able to get the majority of them out with my mat zapper. Now, for some parts on his leg, I did take a three blade in reverse just to kind of clean up some of the sticky outies. Because for those of you that don't know, a three blade two steps down or three blade in reverse, I should say, is a five blade. So I wanted to match what was on his body, so I took a three blade to his legs just to match it up and make sure everything was smooth. Now I want to say this for some new groomers out there because when training new groomers, I notice they do this a lot. So when you have to shave a dog down and the pet parent says, oh you don't have to shave his face, right? And you're like, no I can leave the face, oh leave the face as long as you can, do not do that. Do not do that because if the body is mad at that bad and you have to shave it down, chances are if you leave the face as long as you can, the face is going to be mad at the next time. And you're going to have to shave the face and then shave the body all over again. And the pet parent's not going to be happy and wonder what happened. So when a pet parent asks you, okay, well, what can you do with this face? I can save the face. I can make it cute, but I can't leave it too long because you want him to be proportioned. I see a lot of new groomers leave bobbleheads. That is my biggest pet peeve. I cannot stand a bobblehead because why is the dog's face that big? Why is the dog's face that big? There's no reason for it to be that big. Cut that face down, make a proportion to the body, and then let everything grow in naturally. So when you go ahead the next time and you groom that dog again, you can go in and do the haircut that you want. The face won't be matted or the face won't be overgrown and you have to cut the face down so short that the owner is shocked at what their dog looks like so do everything at once and then when they continue to come back in then you fix it as they go now for his ears i didn't take much off of his ears because i love the length that his ears were already so i took maybe maybe a half an inch off his ears and not a half an inch in terms of the clipper blades half an inch half an inch as what you see on a ruler so i took very little off of his ears because like i said they were already the desired length i just needed to neaten the bottom up because he had a lot of uneven spots on there
all in all for his haircut I just took everything to a proportion length I believe except his tail because she specifically wanted his tail a bit longer so I didn't take a lot off of his tail either I just took off enough where it wasn't dragging the ground so new groomers and pet parents at home if you don't want a lot of fur off of your dog's tail you don't have to take a lot off just be consistent with the brushing use a good conditioning spray but still take enough off where it's not dragging the ground picking up dirt different things like that Now in terms of a good conditioning spray, Chi is a really good one that's a really good detangling spray as well. So I believe that there, are, if I'm not mistaken, it's a detangling spray that is a finishing spray. I use that on a lot of dogs. I think y'all see me do it in the videos. It was probably the red bottle that I picked up. That spray is awesome. Another good spray, I just found this company through pet store direct this spray is awesome and it smells so good the company is called pet allergy pet allergy or petology i believe it's pet allergy because pet is in pink and allergy is in white so i'm going to assume it's pet allergy but nevertheless it is a keratin fortifying finishing spray and it's a leave-in conditioner as well it is made to leave the coat silky smooth and strengthen and repair damaged fur i absolutely love it it smells so good oh my gosh it smells so good and if you don't know me i am a sucker for a smell good spray shampoo conditioner lotion anything a smell good candle i even make my own candle line I make my own body but I just I love things that smell good and also another benefit to this it is flea and tick treatment compatible so it can help to kill flea and ticks it is not a preventative you still need a preventative but it can help to assist in killing fleas and ticks invest in a good conditioning spray it makes a world of difference on how you brush out your dog's coat at home how you comb out your dog's coat at home it's just all around the best investment you'll get also invest in a really good comb a really good comb I was a groomer that did not believe in the hype of buying one of those expensive combs I was never gonna buy a $30 comb a $45 comb a $60 comb I wasn't gonna get it because I didn't believe in the hype of it until I got one myself I don't know what made me buy it but it was a $30 comb it was on sale it's a Chris Christensen comb I don't know the number of it but I'll post the link in my description box from getting it on Amazon I love this comb I compared it to the comb that I've been using I used it on my dog who sheds a bit so I was combing through her with the regular comb and it didn't grab anything I combed through it with the Chris Christensen comb it was phenomenal it was grabbing hair that I didn't even know she had loose on her it was awesome it was awesome and I haven't seen a fluff of hair through the house yet invest in a good comb I'm gonna be one to say that invest in a good comb now I know how I feel about shears I haven't gotten any expensive shears yet I do still believe it is the person behind the shears that creates the groom but get yourself a good comb trust me now we are about to get into the topic and as always guys if y'all have any questions about the haircut if y'all have any questions for me if i missed anything make sure y'all drop it down in the comments make sure y'all hit that like button let's get this video out i'm sure somebody else's dog has allergies they have questions if they have to shave down their dog as well but if y'all have any questions anybody watching this video have any questions drop them down in the comments i love talking to y'all as i state in every video i respond to every single comment the negative ones as well because there are some and that is okay not everybody is going to agree i'm okay with that if everybody agreed this world would not be diverse so any questions drop them in the comments smash that like button let's get into the topic
So for this topic, I'm going to set a disclaimer. It may trigger some people because there is such a great debate on this topic, but it is a really good conversation starter and just a conversation topic just in general. So what I want to talk about really is training your dogs and how you train your dogs and the mentality that you have towards your dog. Now, like I said, this topic is going to trigger a lot of people because not many people agree with it, but it's more so about understanding the history of dogs and the history of animals. And that will help you better your relationship with your dog and better your skill at grooming your dogs. But again, like I said, it's very controversial, but I love this topic because I like helping people understand. But let's get into it before this video is over because I, I'll go off on a tangent. <laughs> so I put up a short of one of my dogs, Yazzie, because she had ate Bella's food and you could tell she knew what she did because she had a guilty look on her face. So I was basically telling her, you get enough food, you do not eat Bella's food, you know better now somebody commented because somebody always comments and said that you shouldn't talk to your dog like that she's just a dog they don't know any better i think something like that and if i was their dog they wouldn't talk to me like that dogs have a pack mentality dogs are pack animals they also run on an alpha mentality now Yazzie and Bella Yazzie's not an alpha dog whatsoever but for some reason she likes to challenge Bella because Bella is an alpha dog now I think Yazzie is trying to find her groove with Bella because she is new to living with her but she's trying to find her dominance in a sense but Yazzie knows not to challenge me because she knows I'm the dominant one she knows not to challenge Charlie because Charlie is the dominant one Charlie's the dominant one out of all of the animals he is the pack leader for the dogs just for the dogs not for me he knows better <laughs> but Yazzie's still trying to find her footing people I notice get so in a huff about how you scold your dog and how you train your dog because they're like oh the dog has feelings don't do that to the dog and this and this and that and forth now here's the thing because like i said dogs are pack animals dogs have to be checked when they do wrong so they know not to do that wrong again if a dog was in a pack a wild pack or just even a pack in their household and the dog got out of the line they get checked by the alpha in the group so they either get checked with a growl they get pinned or they get bit so simply scolding a dog and telling a dog knock it off if you are stern with the dog if it looks like you're hurting the dog's feelings y'all have to understand that dogs run on a alpha dominant basis dogs run on a pack mentality so if they feel like you're the alpha they will not challenge you so that's why in a lot of my videos i say if you can control your table if you are the alpha at your table you can get your dogs to fall in line i am the alpha of all of my grooming tables all of the clients that come on my table all of the dogs that come on my table i am the alpha and they know that which is why i do so well with challenging dogs because they come on my table and they try and challenge me and we almost have like a standstill with some of the dogs the reason why i am able to become so patient with dogs and finding different ways to groom is because i took a while for me to establish that dominance with a lot of dogs I have a dominance aura about me and dogs get that they know okay I'm, I'm going to leave you alone now there are some dogs that will just keep challenging and keep challenging until they feel like okay I can't challenge her no more she's not budging they understand but sometimes you have to be firm with these dogs knock it off stop it snap your finger that's not gonna hurt the dog's feelings you have to be firm with these dogs or the dogs will walk over you 
you have to understand dogs in order to know how to handle them and work with them and manage them if you do not understand dogs that's why i tell everybody research dogs research dogs body language research everything you can about a dog if you want to be a dog groomer because if you don't you are going to struggle because you're going to feel like a dog is purposely doing this when in reality they may not be some dogs will purposely do something i stand firmly on that but a lot of them have no idea so that's why you have to understand dogs and understand body language if you want to do this job if you want to groom your dog at home or even if you just want to have a dog in general understand their mentality and you will have a better relationship with your dog you will have easier training with your dog and just an overall better experience with dogs in general But that is the end of my topic, guys. Thank you all for listening. Now we are going to take a flashback look at Molly's before. This is what he looked like when he came in. And wow, Lord, <laughs> this is his after. He looks like a completely different dog. You can see his cute little eyes. And if you did not catch it and drop it in the comments, he has the cutest overbite. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel. Make sure you train your dogs for grooming. And I will see you in the next video. Love you guys.